Hello and welcome back to more Powered Synergy Cube. Uh, this pack, I mean, there's always good options. This one has like a lot of particularly interesting ones. There's a uh, Wheel of Fortune, which is a good card. Um, it's playable in a lot of combo decks, Storm, but I've also seen people play it in Elves. Uh, Red Madness it's pretty good in, you know, discard your hand, draw a bunch of cards. So that card's sweet. Um, Nettle Cyst, Pest Infestation. This card's one of the best cards in the cube. It's just so good. Uh, Steel Overseer. Stitcher Supplier, Dragon's Rage Chandler is actually pretty tempting too. Um, I might just take Wheel of Fortune and try and wheel Dragon's Rage Chandler. I I love the mono red deck in this cube. Wheel of Fortune slots really well into that, but it's also just... It's a unique effect, and it's fun. Um, it's good with Riel the Everwise. So she says whenever you discard cards for the first time you turn, you draw that many cards. So if you have like six cards in hand, or even four, you cast Wheel of Fortune, you discard... Ooh. <laughs> okay. I'm already excited. Um, survival is a great pickup. Oh no! Wait, this kind of sucks. I want all the cards in this pack. Hang on. Survival is excellent. Just a great magic card. So that's good. Goblin Engineer is sweet. Scourge of Neltoth is forever my pet card. And then Conflagrate Wheel of Fortune is pretty a pretty good combo because you can refill your hand and then discard it to Conflagrate. So I like that. But I'm gonna take Survival. I, I have yet to draft a Survival of the fittest deck. I think so. We can go down that route. Uh, Thrill of Possibility is interesting. It does give you a discard outlet. Verdant Catacombs. This is the Jund Triome. Might take the fetch first and then see what comes around because there's a lot of good Jund cards here and uh, with Survival I'm not really sure what direction I want to go. There are a lot of directions you can go. I think I'm going to take the fetch. I would actually like the Jund Triome because Survival decks tend to be in the Jund Abzan colors. But a lot of it depends on what happens. Uh, we're looking for like some root wallows, some venge vines. Angie's Ravagers would be awesome. Okay, this is sweet. I, I think every time I've drafted this cube, I have ended up in a com completely different archetype. Um, part of it by intention, but also kind of part of it by chance. Ooh, we can enlighten Tutor for survival. That's kind of tempting. There's a lure in here too. Uh, Allurin's kind of interesting. This is a third pick Allurin, so not, you know, nothing crazy or anything. There's a Viserys Seer, which is good with survival if you're looking to assemble some sacrifice loops. This pack is not, like, particularly exciting in any direction. I think it's just kind of a weak or a weird overall pack. Like, I don't think I'm taking Lotus Cobra. Allurin is tempting with survival. And then there's Viserys Seer, which is also tempting with survival. I think I'm gonna take Allurin. I have Wheel of Fortune. Sure. Let's try it. I haven't drafted a Lurin yet. There's... Oh. <laughs> Alright, there's Crater Hoof Behemoth. Pretty good with Survival of the Fittest. But then there's also Elvish Visionary Coiling Oracle. <laughs> I think... This is tempting. Also a lot of lands. This is difficult. <laughs> this draft has been like every single pack has three cards that I want. And they're all pointing in the same direction. So it's hard for me to cut off the archetype. Because... With Allurin and stuff like this, I just want a bunch of creatures that can trip, like Visionary Coiling Oracle, um, so I can draw my deck. But then Crater of Behemoth does give me a win condition off of that. I guess I take Behemoth first. There are two cantripping creatures in that pack, so there is a chance that one of them comes around. And I'm willing to take that. There's a Taiga. There's also a Ketria Triome. I think I want Untapped Land, so I'll just take Taiga. Sylvan Safekeeper is pretty tempting too, but... Gotta take the fixing when you can get it. Misty Rainforest. Ooh, there's Aetherflux Reservoir too. Aetherflux Reservoir is a pretty easy win condition with Allure, and you just you just play it, you win. Uh, Tireless Tracker's tempting as well. I mean, pretty good with Allure, and you can play it, crack some fetches, and then uh, you can use your mana to crack the clues instead of doing Allure and stuff. Banefire, you can get infinite mana with Allure and pretty easily. I'll take the Tracker. It's a fine card here. Okay. Now, I think we're we're in the open lane. The cards are just being opened in weird orders. Finale of Devastation is pretty nice with Crater Hoof and stuff. Breeding Pool is cool. And then Ramen Up Excavator, also quite nice with fetches and stuff. I think I'm going to take Finale. Although I did see Squandered Resources, so like Lands is also quite open. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe someone's drafting all the Elves, but then Lands is wide open. Hmm. I don't know what to do here. I'm going to take Excavator. I already have Crater Hoof. Wow, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, nobody's drafting elves. That's a pest infestation. There's also Dragon's Rage Channeler. I don't have that many non creature spells. Elvish Warmaster is good if I do want to go into elves. I mean, I do have a Lurin. 
This is a wild draft. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I don't think I'm taking Dragonfish Channeler. I think it's between Infestation and Warmaster. I don't have any L's yet, but I do have a Lurin. I'm going to take this card. It's just so strong. All right, Scourge came around, as did Conflagrate. Zagoth Charm doesn't matter too much. Gitrog Monster is literally on a Standard Bear. Standard Bear Lurin is kind of cute. But I think with Survival, I just want Scourge. I don't know. I could see that going either direction. Um, I'm going to take the Jund Triome here. Paradoxical Outcome. I'm going to take... Paradoxical Outcome is good with a Lurin. But I think we take the blue fixing first. Okay, so Coiling Oracle did come around. So I at least got one of the two. Pretty happy about that. And then Cathartic Reunion. Sure. Nettle Sentinel. All right, so green is open. It was just a weird pack for elves. Uh, we really need to prioritize the... Cheap one drop creatures because <laughs> Survival of the Fittest is not the fastest card in the world, um, but it can do some stuff. I'm pretty excited for where this is headed. I don't know where it's headed, but finding out is going to be a fun journey. <laughs> this is a, a Lurin Survival Wheel of Fortune Crater Hope deck. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Mox Pearl is actually pretty good in this deck because we have a lot of like three mana cards with no color like colorless mana casting a learn faster is good so i like that ignoble hierarch is also pretty nice it uh ramps us it fixes for all of our colors and you can cast it off a of learn discard it to survival so i almost want to take the hierarch over the mox i pass mox in pretty heavily in this cube um and it, it's just because especially in green a lot of times an on color mana fixing is going to be similar or better than a mox like in your opening hand Mox Pearl in this deck is particularly good at accelerating out three drops. And in your opening hand, you could just play a one mana creature and then accelerate out a three drop. And then you're not, uh, you know, have this colorless mana in your deck. I'm not sure if this is correct. I could easily see taking the Mox and then wheeling the Hierarch, but I think as this deck unfolds. Well, I have Wheel of Fortune. All right, I'll take the Mox. There's Vengevine. Vengevine survival is just so sweet, so I'll take it. Endurance. Earthcraft. Ooh, Hogak. <laughs> oh, this is a pretty interesting Hogak deck for sure. Earthcraft Allurin is also very spicy though. Earthcraft Survival the Fittest. You know, you could just keep playing stuff. Oh man. Containment Construct Survival the Fittest is also tempting. What are we doing here? What is this deck? I have no idea. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I kind of just want to take this Hogak. I love Hogak as a card. Yeah, I'm taking Hogak. I don't know entirely what the purpose of that card is, but it's too sweet not to do. So we're just going to take it. Beck Call with a Lurin is kind of sweet, so I'll do that. We're drafting like four different decks at the moment, and all of them are awesome. Wooded Foothills. I don't have a Sack Outlet for Veteran Explorer. Just kidding, I have Scourge of Neltoth. Oh, I like that. Uh... Interesting. Do I take Badlands? I have Verdant Catacombs right now. I don't think so. I think Wooded Foothills grabs a lot of colors here, so let's do that. I'm hoping to get Veteran Explorer on the wheel. There's a Master of Death. There's also Angie's Ravager. Okay, this deck is, is shaping up. There's also Seder Wayfinder to go with Hogak Scourge. Huh. This is tough. I think the first effect like Master of Death is really important in decks like this because you can discard it to survival and then just get it back right away. So I think I like that. We can also cast it with Alluren and Surveil too, which is really strong. Cedar Wayfinder is a sweet magic card for this deck. Stomping Ground, Elves of Deep Shadow. I think I got to take the Elves. I already have Taiga and Cheap Creatures are great. Glimpse of Nature, pretty good. I don't have any of the... Oh no, <laughs> it's in the same pack. I was just going to say. I don't have any of this dude. Um, Glimpse of Nature, Windswept Heath can grab Taiga, Tropical Island, Jundatrium. Course Skyfisher goes infinite with Alluren and Glimpse of Nature, or uh, Beck Call. <laughs> this deck is spicy. Let's take Glimpse. So red is looking a little weird. I don't know if I need Cathartic Reunion, but it's kind of fun. Uh, we want this Earthcraft to come around, I guess. I think Bridge from Below is in pack one, which I'm kind of sad about. Fecundity, Pitiless Plunderer, Crypt Breaker. I'm feeling this Crypt Breaker. Uh, Fecundity's fine. Plunderer... I don't love... Yeah, I'll take the Crypt Breaker. Just being a one-mana creature is quite good if you're trying to do Hogak stuff. Alsa's Oracle is a fairly good win condition. There's the White Main Lion, though. I have Glimpse of Nature. Yeah, I gotta take the White Main Lion. There's our Earthcraft. So now we have, like, a bunch of ways to generate infinite mana. Chatterfang's kind of adorable. 
Take a Chatterfang. I don't have any token generation right now, do I? Oh, Pest Infestation Chatterfang is kind of cool. That's kind of all I have, though. Okay. <laughs> this deck... This deck is getting so weird. Uh, Veteran Explorer... I think this deck just needs... I really want to find a sack outlet for it. Life from the Loam is kind of cute, but the Explorer is awesome. With Scourge of Neltoth, sack Veteran Explorer, get two lands, keep going off. It seems great to me. I don't... I literally don't know... Oh, we got it. Cedar Wayfinder, get in the deck. Headless Rider, we don't actually have that many zombies. And a Dark Blast, okay. Okay, so we're playing some some deep spice here. We're playing Hogak, Scourge, Allure, and Infinite Combo, Crater Hoof, Earthcraft stuff. And I'm about it. 100% about it. So, Alter Dimension is good. My mana is really suspicious, but I do want some number of basics for Earthcraft. Although, actually, Veteran Explorer Earthcraft is a pretty interesting combo, because this can tutor up the basics that you want, and then go for it. Misty Rainforest right now can grab Taiga Tropical and our Jund Triome. Bloodstained Mire can just grab Taiga Jund Triome. So Misty's interesting. Undead Butler's kind of cute. Elvish Reclaimer. I don't have any lands in particular that I'm trying to fetch up. So I guess I just take this Misty here. We're really kind of looking for a Bayou pretty hard. If we can find one. Genesis Chamber. Genesis Chamber Earthcraft is tempting. Uh, good with a Lurid. Smuggler's Copter is another discard outlet, because right now really the only way to get uh, Scourge of Neltoth into my graveyard is Survival. So the Copter can help with that a little bit. Uh, Temple Garden doesn't really help my mana. I guess it lets me cast White Mane Lion. I might just take Wishclaw Talisman to just fetch up one of these like <laughs> 15 different win conditions. Although Eternal Witness Allurin actually, I think that's where I'm going to go. That card is nice. Ooh. <laughs> Anger, Basking Brute, Wall of Wooded Foothills. Anger's sweet here. This turns um, Survival of the Fittest into just an insane win con. You just grab Anger, and then you're sending like Hasty, Hogax, Scourge of Neltoth's, Vengevines at people. Um, there's a chance Anger comes around and I just take the Root Wall of first. Because Root Wall is actually pretty important. Well, only specifically with Survival. But you can cast Hogak and Vengevine and stuff with it. Whereas this is just a card you want to survival. I guess I take the Root Wall of first and wield the Anger. This is tough. I want both. I'm not sure how to get there. I think I'm going to take Root Wall of her Glimpse. But Anger is a card that I really, really want to come around. There's a Badlands. Punishing Fire, Mayhem Devil, Cloud of Fairies. Kind of cool. Uh, I think Badlands is a fetchable untapped Black Source is kind of nice. Greater Gargadon can do some stuff. Let's take the Badlands. Okay, Blazing Root Wall, I like that one. We, ha we have some Root Wall of Chains now. I would give so much for like a Bazaar of Baghdad. Gamble is cool. Bayou, I think helps my mana substantially. This lets all of my fetches hit green, black, untapped. Yeah, I'll take Bayou. Relentless Dead, Gilded Goose. Uh, the Goose is actually pretty nice. Just accelerating my deck a bit. Um, Relentless Dead with some sack outlets can go infinite with, uh, I think Relentless Dead, Earthcraft, and then a sack outlet does some stuff with a Lurin in play, but I think we'll just take the Goose here. Traverse the Ulvenwald. Okay, that one's tempting. Innkeeper is pretty good, mixing for mana of any color. Traverse can find just creatures or lands, right? So it can't get survival. I think one big problem with this deck is just going to be finding survival. This can also fetch up basics. It can grab White Mane Lion, Instant Sorcery Creature Land. I don't think I'm going to hit Delirium easy enough. Let's do that, and then Elvis Reclaimer, Undead Butler, Crop Rotation. Again, we don't really have any good things to Crop Rotate for, so I'll just take the Reclaimer. I don't know if I'm playing it. Corvold is a really good card. Fiend Artisan can tutor stuff up, like Eternal Witness, technically Hogak. Uh, Bloodcaster is good, but I'm not really sacking stuff. I'm just going to take the Artisan. I don't know. Seems good. There's Anger. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I could take Field of the Dead too, but I think Anger's just too fun to pass up. Greater Gargadon. Sure. Faithless Looting. That might actually be good in this deck. Gamble also might be good in this deck. This deck is sweet. <laughs> it's, it's got a lot of different directions going on. We've got... We have so many different directions. <laughs> Full infinite alluring combos. <laughs> Plus... Hogak stuff. I 
don't know if this is actually a crater hoof deck. The only way for me to realistically cast crater hoof is off of infinite mana earthcraft, but if I have infinite mana earthcraft, I can probably just win doing other stuff. It really annoys me how, you know, you can sort your deck by cards you're interested in playing, and then as soon as the, the match ends, it stops. Uh, get rid of Nettle Sentinel. Maybe Crypt Breaker, Relentless Dead go away. I like the Root Wallace. Gamble for survival. Sometimes you might just have to do it. Dark Blast is tempting, but I think I'm trying to minimize the black man in this deck. Um, if I cut Scourge, then I'm just straight Naya colors. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and see how I feel about it. Cause then I would cut these cards too. So this would be still 28 playables. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chatterfang is a no-go. I think I like Cathartic Reunion with double Wall of Master of Death. That's good. I mean, we have Earthcraft Wheel of Fortune. Earthcraft uh, Pest Infestation is pretty good. These all effectively cost zero, so I'm going to put them over here. My curve is looking a bit better. I don't think I need Elvis Reclaimer. Back call with White Mane Lion, I mean, just makes things really easy. What happens if I get rid of the Alluren? Or like, I have Glimpse of Nature, right? So what happens if I get rid of Beck Call? Ah, Beck Call Pest Infestation is pretty good too. I think I'm going to keep it. Oh, Ramanop Excavator is pretty weird here. I can cut that one. Master of Death also effectively costs zero. Turn of Witness, Wheel of Fortune, Tireless Tracker. So we could do... I could cut this section of the deck. That gets rid of the Allure and Infinite combos, but then I just have this, like, Scourge of Neltoth. Might even get rid of... I might get rid of Earthcraft in that situation. And then I would just have, like, Scourge of Neltoth, Vengevine, Anger, Hogak stuff. And then I'd bring back, like, a Crypt Breaker. This version of the deck might be better. I'm gonna think about this. I don't know, man. This deck is wild. I love this cube so much because there's, like, three different ways I could build this deck. And I think all could be interesting. I have a, uh, like, Alluren, Glimpse of Nature, Beck Call, White Mane Lion stuff. But then I also have just this synergistic graveyard deck that, I don't know, right? We, we have Earthcraft, Glimpse of Nature. I, I, I literally don't know how to build this. I think in this build, we probably don't run Coiling Oracle. So that helps a little bit there. Uh, There's 22 playables, which is not a ton. Alluren... I mean, it's good with some creatures. This is not a good Alluren deck, I don't think. I have some creatures, but it, it's not a lot of combos there. So I don't think I'm doing that. I could bring back Glimpse of Nature, because it's kind of funny if you go Glimpse and then double discard like Basking Blazing Root Wall into a Gamble or Faithless Leading or something. But even then, it's kind of weird in this deck. I can just main deck Dark Blast, because Dredging is actually fairly strong here. So I think I'd do that. I don't have that many zombies. I could just bring in Chatterfang specifically for Pest Infestation because that combo is really strong. I mean, with Earthcraft, I can just cast Crater Hoof not that difficultly, I don't think. Uh, I'm just going to bring in Glimpse. I think it's a... Even if you only get one card off of it, this deck just wants to draw some key cards like Survival. So being able to turn through your deck is pretty good. Uh, these are all basically free. This is a two-drop. But we have a lot of discard, right? Faithless Looting, Cathartic Reunion, Wheel of Fortune. So I think it's kind of hard for us to draw too many lands. So 16 land feels okay. Going down to 15, you know, I just like, I could discard a Crypt Breaker. Uh, maybe I do just run like a Elvish Reclaimer to go with Glimpse of Nature. Run 15 land or yeah, I'm going to look at this. Uh, so I do want Bayou, Junt, Triumph, Badlands. And do I want Tropical Island for Master of Death? I think so. It also makes some of my other fetches do something. I don't know. <laughs> so right now there's that. We're running five basics. I don't want any islands. Do I want any basic swamps? Yes, because we, we want to be able to get Scourge. So something like this feels okay. Uh, green sources right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'll be 10 green. Seems okay. Red, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's actually plenty of red. I think that's enough red. Black, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's enough. I'm gonna add another basic forest, I think. Ooh, we get another one. 
Uh, the only reason for adding a basic red is for veteran explorer, basically. And so we can turn on anger from veteran explorer, but we have so many mountains. I think that's all right. I'm just going to get a second swamp for scourge, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green. Uh, we can just go up to 11 green. I think with survival of the fittest, we just want a lot of green sources. 15 land. So let's sort the curve out how it's actually going to play out. This guy's a zero, zero, zero. Hogak goes in the zeros. Pest infestation is at least a three. Tireless tracker, I guess, is kind of weird, but it's just fine. It's just an okay card. Pretty good with the veteran explorer, actually. I feel like I want 16 land. I'm going to cut tireless tracker for the 16th land. I could definitely be wrong, but we'll see how it goes. I can always bring it back if I need to, but I, I like, I think I maybe tunnel vision too much into a focused game plan, and this deck has a very focused game plan, and I think I like that a lot. So I'm going to test out this deck. I probably do want to run Coiling Oracle. How much blue sources do I actually have? One, two, three, four. That's not enough. All right, I'm going to try out this deck with 15, or, oh, it's effectively 16. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to see how this deck goes. See you guys around one. Oh, right, we're playing against Tulse. Uh, no, this hand is not good. I basically need to keep a hand with Acceleration or Survival. I'm going to keep this in Gamble for Survival because I'm a, I'm a crazy man. Uh, this hand, Earthcraft, is kind of weird, but so is this many lands. I'm just going to put back a forest. And we just go turn one Gamble, I think. Ooh, Forest Lotus Petal. Okay. What do we got going on over there? Okay, I like that. I'm just gonna do this. It's a very high chance that it works out. Okay, we discard a forest. Kind of upsetting actually, but it works. Next turn I get to play survival and then start doing stuff, but I did miss my second green. Okay, Midnight Reaper. Ooh, they're on that uh, graveyard sacrifice theme. But they're down to three cards in hand and we draw another forest, so... Yeah, I'm going to risk it. There's like a bunch of cards here, like Elvish Reclaimer, that can punish me, but if we get to untap with Survival in play, we kind of just win. So hopefully that works out. Take four. They play the land tapped and just a Springleaf Drum. I can work with that. Okay, we got a shot. Tropical Island. So that's another green, so interesting. So I can discard Anger. Let's think about the loops I can get. I should have a picture of my deck. Hang on. When in doubt, I just consult my old recording. So I have uh, Anger. I can gamble for Master of Death, which is pretty tempting, but I can't, there's more cards I want in my graveyard. So I can gamble for Vengevine. And then I discard this, grab Vengevine. Discard Vengevine, grab Rootwall, discard Rootwall, cast Rootwall. That doesn't really work. I think I just play Tropical Island and pass turn. I can play Earthcraft. Yeah, I'll just pass turn here. And then I can pretty much just like Hogak them next turn, I think. I'm going to take the four. Innkeeper's fine. Okay, I think we got this. So we survival, discard Anger. Anger is going to grab Vengevine. Then we discard Vengevine. Vengevine is going to grab Hogak. Then we discard Hogak. <laughs> Hogak is going to grab... Uh, at this point, I think I want to start Rootwalla Chains next turn. So I'll grab Basking Rootwalla. And we're going to go Swamp. Do I want to go Earthcraft? Uh, I guess I can wait, right? No, let's do Earthcraft. Discard the Rootwalla. Cast it with Madness. Then we get the other Rootwalla. Discard this Rootwalla. Cast it with Madness. We get back Vengevine. Then we get a creature. Uh, what am I feeling here? Just cast a Veteran Explorer? Hogak right now? I don't really want to exile Anger. I kind of want to send a hasty Scourge of Neltoth at them. But that would require tapping out my entire team. Let's just grab Seder Wayfinder. Then we can tap this. Untap, then tap this. Cast Seder Wayfinder. 
fill our graveyard. Putting Scourge of Nell Toth on our graveyard. I'll give a land that doesn't hurt me. Then with casting Hogak would be one, two, three, four. So I can't actually cast Hogak in this spot, but I can next turn. So I think that's fine. And I'm just gonna hold back Vengevine. I think Crater Hope in this deck is probably fine. I have Earthcraft and I could just do all of this stuff. Okay, we can survive all the way the Fiend Artisan, but Fiend Artisan is actually going to be kind of big. But I think I want to. <laughs> let's, just, let's just get some good cards here. Survival, discard you, grab Master of Death. Whoa. Then we tap this, discard Master of Death. This is so sweet. Grab Eternal Witness. On my upkeep, we bring back Master. Veteran Explorer is kind of awesome too. I can give them more lands, which I don't know if I actually want to do. Um, I want to actually sacrifice Vengevide and Scourge. So we untap this. Double black. Let's uh, Earthcraft here with the Blazing Root Walla. Then we cast Scourge, attacking these two. Then I can just play Hogak. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven for the Ruwala. We get back Vengevine. Easy ability, yes. Then, I guess I cast Eternal Witness. Get back Fiend Artisan. Okay, so they have like swords. Path to Exile. They path that one instead of Hogak. Interesting. Grab my only remaining land. I will get back this guy. Oh, I should have tapped Scourge to untap a land. That's fine, though. Go ahead and go with Fiend Artisan. Then send some big creatures at them. Hogak Vengevine. Yeah, Crater Hope Behemoth is necessary in this deck, I think. I don't know if they realize this card is Trample. They do get to draw a card, though. Go ahead. Recruiter the Guard. All right, what do you get to find? Mother of Runes. Sure, sure. Other runes is fine. So I kind of just want to fill my graveyard with Fiend Artisan so I can do a ton of damage. So let's discard some stuff. Earthcraft here. Discard you. Grab Gilded Goose. Earthcraft here. Discard you. Grab Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, so that's pretty much all the creature cards I can get into my graveyard. And I will pay the life. Because now I can play this guy main phase. Surveil 2. Glimpse of Nature, Wheel of Fortune. Graveyard. Graveyard. I think I'm just going to play all my dudes and swing out. Play the Reclaimer. Play the Explorer. They're at 8. This has got to be lethal. <laughs> I'm not going to count it up. It's just got to be lethal. If they drew, like, specifically Swords to Plowshares, maybe they can do something. Okay. Super dead. Um, yeah, Crater Hoof is good. I should, I should have this card in the deck. On the draw, we bring in Crater Hoof. Veteran Explorer seems pretty safe against their deck, so I don't mind that. Dark Blast seems good. I, I like Dark Blast against them. They have Path. Yeah, I mean, I could just discard Crater Hoof early and then get it back with Eternal Witness. That seems good. What do I cut? This deck is so full of good stuff. Eh, I'm just gonna cut Dark Blast. I know I said I liked it against them, but I like everything else in my deck more. Well, this is a hand. If I hit a land in the next two draw steps, Seder Wayfinder can just kind of save me. But it's kind of like a double mulligan, so I might as well just mulligan. Because, yeah, this is way better. Keep this. Get rid of... Hmm. I mean, I'm just going to gamble sur for survival, probably. Although Faithless Looting is pretty good, too. Maybe just get rid of this tapped land. Okay, they can... Okay, it's not Thoughtseize. As long as it's not Thought Seize. Yeah, let's just try it. Gamble for survival. There's a chance it doesn't work out. Yeah, we discard a forest. Excellent. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. So, I kind of want a Cedar Wayfinder. Metallic Mimic. Uh-oh. Alright, I am bringing in Dark Blast if they're on Persist combo. Elsor Shepherd is a 2-2. Sure. I'm going to Cedar Wayfinder because I actually kind of want a Pest Infestation next turn. So hitting a land here would be great. 
Okay, Anger's in the graveyard. Um, we hit Earthcraft, which is a little annoying. I don't remember why Tropical Island is here. Oh, for casting Master of Death. But I think I'm actually just going to Verdant Catacombs. Yeah, that seems good. So now Cedar Wayfinder can block Metallic Mimic if I want to. But I think more specifically next turn, I just like Pest Infestation and Metallic Mimic make two tokens. And then I can Survival for Hogak. Actually, uh, if I Survival for Hogak, now I have to Exile Anger. Is that true? No, it's actually not because I could exile the fetch land. Spawning pit. Okay, so they have a lot of sack outlets and a metallic mimic. I probably should just kill the mimic. We're going to catacombs for Bayou. Uh, actually, if I infestation the mimic, they can sack it to spawning pit and then I don't get pest. Here I can play survival the fittest. Yeah, actually, let's just race. They have three cards in hand. Let's just go survival the fittest. Discard the root walla. There's six cards in my graveyard, so I can exile one, two, three, four, five, and just cast Hogak. I think I like that with haste quite a lot. Discard you. This is such a sweet line. Cast you. Grab Hogak. Cast Hogak. Attack for eight hasty damage. <laughs> sweet. Next turn, Pest Infestation's pretty lethal. We can uh, do some Vengevine stuff, I think. Okay, so they have infinite spawning pit tokens, but that doesn't actually win the game. Because they don't have infinite mana or anything. So if they show something that works with this, that's fine. But it, it, currently, this doesn't actually do that much. They get a 2-2. Right? Am I crazy? Remove a charge counter from it, create a spawn artifact creature token. So, yeah, they just have a bunch of tutus, but they can only spend mana to make one of them. So that doesn't actually work for them, I don't think. Take three. I feel kind of bad. They assembled the persist combo too, but that's kind of why I wasn't scared of a spawning pit specifically, because it doesn't win the game with uh, persist combos. Oh, there's a scourge. Uh, interesting. I guess Pest Infestation is probably just lethal. So they can make a 2-2 blocker. Yeah, because I can't kill Metallic Mimic because they just sacrifice it. Although, maybe I should. I don't know. <laughs> if they find a better uh, sack outlet here, we could be in trouble. They're making a more counters? I don't know. Oh, I see. They just wanted it untapped. That makes sense. Okay, and then they can block... Six damage here, and they take one, two, three, four, five, six. They don't die. Maybe that was a bit aggressive of a line. Just attack with Hogak. Yeah, because they have all these blockers. All right, I don't like that line that I just took. I think I'm supposed to, like, Faithless Looting and try and hit another Black Source for Scourge, because then they're just dead. Or I could even, like, Survival to get Vengevine into the graveyard. That way they can attack into those. Right, I survival, discard Scourge, grab Vengevine. Discard Vengevine, grab Rootwalla. No, I still don't have enough. Yeah, there, there was like a... Quite a few plays I could make, none of them were amazing. Knight of Autumn kills Survival. That's cool. Okay, so they have Path to Exile with, if they're making this type of an attack. No, they don't. Okay, so they have to block Scourge with pretty much everything. Oh, Wheel of Fortune's kind of fun, but no, let's play this looting. Discard a Scourge, Forest. I could just go Forest, Crypt Breaker. I can even pump the Blazing or Basking Root Walla now. So, as far as attacks go, they have one, two, three, four, five, six. So, they have to block Hogak with at least these. And then they take two, they block here. Yeah, I think I just attack out. I don't know. This feels like the time to sway out. <laughs> This is very much a math is for blockers type deck. Uh, we just kill everything. Sure. Pump here. They die. Okay, <laughs> see you guys next round. All right, we're playing against Misha64. Let's go first. You too, Caleb. Hey, not sure if you saw, but I responded to your comment to my comment earlier. Okay, well, I'm where? I, I'm sorry if I don't remember your specific comments, but I get comments on like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I said you were right and I was wrong. This cube is awesome. Just variants and all the artifact decks I was running into. Oh, uh, okay. 
Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, someone said they basically didn't enjoy the cube because they were running into a bunch of an artifact um, decks, but I was like, they said they ran into like six in a row, and I was like, that's just very statistically unlikely. <laughs> but it's good to hear that they've turned around. Also, they have Lurus as their companion, so they probably have a lot of discard. I'm going to keep this hand. I have Faithless Looting, and uh, Earthcraft seems good. Veteran Explorer is really nice in this hand. I can get, like, Swamps for Scourge. Uh, wooded Foothills... I have to get Bayou, but part of me wants to get Badlands, but I have to get Bayou. Or no, not Bayou. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I get Yeah. Although, you know what? Let's do this. They can kill my Veteran Explorer if they want to, but if I draw a land, then I can Earthcraft into Faithless Looting. And this deck could do with some more lands. Okay, they don't do anything. Land off the top. Pest Infestation. All right, Faithless Looting. Oof. Let's discard Master of Death, Scourge of Nel Toth. Hit them for one. Am I just gonna like gamble for a land now? That feels kind of awkward. Ooh, collective brutality. Well, wait, they're killing that. Okay, well I get my land at least, so I can't complain too much. <laughs> uh, they could take Wheel of Fortune, but now gamble is online. That actually worked out. I just wanted them to kill this and they did, and that's awesome. They could take Pest Infestation. They took Pest Infestation, that makes sense to me. And I think Veteran Explorer in general is pretty good against Lurus decks because they, they just don't have a big curve. The downside is they get to use their mana first, so technically they get like more mana off of this, but if it's just for Blood Artist, that's not a big deal with me. I will return you to hand. The Tara's Proving Grounds. So I think I just gamble for Life from the Loam or Survival of the Fittest here. We discard the land. All right. Then I'll just play Survival. Last turn. Part of me wanted to play the land first, but uh, just maximizing my chances of hitting survival, I think, is where I want to be. Okay, upkeep, we don't have anything here. Gilded Goose is kind of cool. So what kind of lines can I take here? Scourge of Neltoth is good, that's for sure. I think I cast Earthcraft. Oh wait, I need green. And I can cast this Goose and just set up for next turn. Like, they're only playing Lurus and discard doesn't really affect my deck. Okay, they fatal push that, so let's untap a forest. And then we pass turn. We have survival master of death, so we can just get stuff if we want it. I'm going to grab probably Vengevine. I think that, well, Anger is also pretty good. We'll see what happens. This is a really tough matchup for Lurus decks, though, just because we can go so big. They play Lurus. They actually can't get anything back, right? This is just cast, yeah. This is very unfortunate. Our deck just sidesteps removal, and that's the beautiful part about it. Discard Master of Death. All right, so we need to come up with a plan. Uh, if we get Vengevine, then we can just discard Anger later, because I think we're going to get Vengevine here. Then we discard Vengevine for Root Walla, discard Root Walla, and we can use the Root Wallas to get green. Yeah, this is actually... Earthcraft Survival is awesome. Get you back. Oh, we draw Anger. All right, fair enough. Discard Vengevine. Grab Blazing Rootwalla. Discard Blazing Rootwalla. Cast it to grab Basking Rootwalla. Tap this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Discard Basking Rootwalla. Cast this. Get back Vengevine. And I guess I just grab Crypt Breaker's basically zero mana. I can grab, I can cast Scourge from my graveyard. I could just grab and cast Hogak. I think just grab and cast Hogak's pretty spicy in this spot. Cast Hogak with this, 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 these two. This is so degenerate. All right, now I go Swamp. And then I'm going to untap this swamp with Hogak. And we're going to cast Scourge of Nel Toth. Sacrificing Vengevine and the green Rootwalla. Because next turn I could just get back Vengevine. So I have all these big dudes. Uh, I could still do Earthcraft stuff, but I want Scourge on defense. We'll see what they have here. No plays end of turn. That's a good sign. They said freaking sweet. 
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is just a really, really bad matchup for you. And I'm I'm sorry about it. I don't think I need Crater Hoof here. I think my deck is just pretty good against theirs. Because they're not playing white, so they don't have exile effects the big stuff. Oh, maybe I don't want Dark Blast, right? I don't really care what they have going on. Let's just bring in like a Nettle Sentinel. Uh actually I'm just gonna bring in Coiling Oracle. <laughs> it's uh it's a green creature I can kind of cast sometimes, but mostly it's just there to, like, discard stuff. But having a higher density of creature cards in my graveyard I think makes sense. I just... Uh, on the draw... Okay, fine, I'll keep Dark Blast in. We'll see if it actually submitted or not. <laughs> it's pretty greedy. Wow, this hand is beyond terrible. This hand is pretty good. Keep this hand, and with two mana creatures... I guess I just bought him a forest. This could be playing into their thing, right? They have a bunch of removal, so if they just kill all my creatures, that's kind of an issue. Alright, Dark Blast. Get back in the deck. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I ever doubted you, Dark Blast. Uh, Crib Breaker's kind of fun, but I don't really have too much to go with it, so let's just go Elves of Deep Shadow and try and set up for Pest Infestation next turn, killing their mocks. Okay, well, that's a dead Elves of Deep Shadow. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a problem. If I draw the Coiling Oracle instead of Dark Blast here, I'm going to be kind of sad. Because uh, I think we might be dead. They could discard my Gilded Goose and then leave me with very little in the way of stuff that does things. Land there was huge, actually. So here we're going to grab Bayou. We can go Crypt Breaker into Gilded Goose. And then next turn, I'll try and go for the Pest Infestation on Mox Ruby. Uh-oh. What could they be vampiric tutoring for? Black Lotus? Go Black Lotus Lurus, that'd be spicy. Actually, I get to see what they tutored for because they have Dark Confidant, right? But, uh, that shows me? That's fun. I love this dude in the background of Dark Confidant. <laughs> like, what is going on over there? Alright, what did they get? Deathrite Shaman. Ah, oh, clever, because it eats my graveyard. They don't have green mana yet, but that seems like a good pickup. This is probably killing another creature. Yep. Interesting, they went with that one. Okay. They don't have green mana at the ready. Cool, cool. I think I just Pest Infestation the Mox. They're a little bit limited on mana, and I don't want to give them another land to eat if I don't have to. Kill this. Pass turn. This saves my Gilded Goose mana. And hopefully they don't discard my Wheel of Fortune, because that would be pretty rough. No! <laughs> uh, hit it with the Frowdy base. Oh, that sucks. I was so prepared. And now they have their green man available. So now what do I do? Wheel of Fortune down. I have no removal in my deck to deal with Kaisel Freebooter. And they just exile Crypt Breaker. Well, what if I draw Survival of the Fittest here? What if I draw Blazing Root Walla? Everyone's favorite magic card. Uh, I have no attacks. All right. <laughs> we'll hold up creatures for a glimpse of nature, maybe. They draw Blood Artist. Pretty good against pest tokens. Ooh, Phyrexian Tower. I don't know, maybe casting uh, Pest Infestation was a bit greedy. Maybe I'm just supposed to cast Wheel of Fortune while I know the window's open because my hand, my deck with a seven card hand is a lot scarier than theirs, most likely. Basically, it's just a question of, like, proactive versus reactive. Uh, I think I do fetch. I need to thin my deck and close out this game fairly quickly. I have blue. I don't actually have red. Grab Stomping Ground. I can just cycle the Proving Ground if I draw it. Oh, I forgot to make another food. There's Hogak. Okay, just cast Hogak. Seems good. Oh. Just an 8-8 eight -eight dude. And given that, I guess I just cast the Root Walla. It would be nice to have another food token. They're doing two to me. Yeah, I should have made a food there, but that's okay. They hit Mountain, so they can cast Lurus, they can replay Mox Ruby. <laughs> if I draw Anger, I could just cast it and attack. That's kind of fun. Alright, so opponent plays Blood Artist. They tanked for a while, so it must not be like an easy line for them. Usually when opponent tanked for a long time, they could be in a pretty rough spot. Um, or they just had something come up in real life. It's hard to tell with, in, you know, in-person 
versus online. Like maybe their cat got outside or something. Lurus. And then they can recast Mox Ruby. And then they have more mana to do stuff. I'm trying to think what cards could scare me. I mean, if they just play Kill Spell and Hogak, they can exile it. And that would be rough. Collective Brutality, discarding a root while killing my goose. Okay, so they're going full burn. If I die by three damage, I'm going to be a bit sad about it. Yep, they're going all in on burn. Okay, goose down. I lose some life. Then they attack with the Freebooter. I think they were maybe just doing the math of, uh, you know, if I draw something versus they draw something, how quickly can they beat me? They have Lurus for life gain. Yep, that's why I didn't want to play the Blazing Root Walla. Oh, that sucks. Ah, I, I immediately regret that. I could just do some really crazy stuff, like get Scourge of Niltoth in my graveyard. All right, let's attack with Hogak. The thing is, they don't die to two swings with Hogak, but I die to some stuff. Maybe I attack with Hogak and the Root Walla, but then I'm pretty weak to removal. They have two cards in hand. If I attack with Blazing Root Walla, what happens? They block with their Blazing Root Walla, and I just take two damage. Okay, I'll just attack like this. The long think, I know it's hard on the vid. Oh, no problem. If they take it, they go to eight. Then they can attack me back. The nice thing is the Pest Tokens do gain me life, so it negates the Blood Artist triggers. Do they swing with both? Uh, they can just recast Dark Confidant with Luris. I think I do. I'm kind of locked into blocking with a Pest Token here. Otherwise, they just pump it and I take a lot of damage. I fall to 6 life. Or 7 off the Freebooter, yeah. They replay the Root Wallet with Lurus. Uh, this is getting kind of close. Veteran Explorer. So, what do I do from this spot? Explorer doesn't help a lot. They can exile Anger if they have it in my graveyard. They can also ping me for 2 off Deathrite Shaman. But forcing them to exile Anger, I think, is worthwhile. So, let's survival here. What are we getting? Vengevine doesn't do a whole lot. I can go Anger and a Fiend Artisan. That doesn't require me to sacrifice two creatures. Man, I might actually lose by that three life I didn't gain. I grab Anger. I discard Anger. I grab... Grab Anger, I discard Anger. Or I grab Scourge. Then discard skirt that doesn't work i think it starts with anger and of course they can exile anger but i think that's okay i can now grab basking root walla that doesn't help me so much just fiend artisan attack for you know as a 4-4 four four is not terrible oh this is really tough grab basking root walla or grab vengevine discard vengevine no that doesn't work i think i think i just grabbed fiend artisan they can gain life off the Lurus, too. Okay, so I got them to exile the Anger, so I'm taking less damage, which is good. So here we just attack with Hogak. And then if I can survive next turn, I think I should be able to win from there. Unless they have a spell. If they have a spell, we're turbo dead. They Fatal Push Fiend Artisan. I fall to 6. They can hit me for 1, 2. Oh, and then these are going to die and trigger stuff. I think I'm actually dead. They should Phyrexian Tower something down, probably. The Kite Self Freebooter? No, that just does one. I don't think it actually matters. Yeah, the three life. That's cool, though. We get a game three. I'm enjoying this matchup, so I'm, I'm kind of happy I get to play another game. This is like the only cube where I'm kind of happy that I'm losing if I do, because it means I get to play more games. And the Phyrexian Tower down the root wall. It put me down to five. Oh, we're super dead. Yeah, I'll let them kill me here. But yeah, Kaizo Freebooter plus Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, I'll just concede. Save time. That was sweet. Super glad they didn't concede. So I get to see more of their deck. They have Collective Brutality and uh, Kite Sail Freebooter that I've seen. I think we just run it back. I don't actually have blue mana for Coiling Oracle. Dark Blast did stay in, and I think Dark Blast should stay in. Being able to kill Blood Artist is really important. Or uh, you can double activate Dark Blast by casting it on your upkeep, then dredging it, then casting it again. So if I want to kill Lurus, I can do that. Just a sweet magic card. All right, my opponent said they're trying something probably wrong, but I'm here for it. Because I'm, I typed out here, but I'm in this weird position where I'm not actually playing to win so much necessarily. Because I don't know, I'd like, 
any any whether I win or my opponent wins, it's like a win for the cube because something cool happened. So I'm just here to see like cool games. And if I win this game, that's awesome. If I lose this game, you know, that's actually kind of awesome too. This hand, uh, I actually like it. I'm just gonna go turn two Wheel of Fortune. We'll see if they if they can stop it. This hand is actually pretty good with a turn two Wheel of Fortune. Just don't kill my goose. Yes. Excellent. Let's go Bayou Wheel. It's <laughs> like this at red. Wheel of Fortune. Haha! -ha. <laughs> oh, they have Dark Blast. Uh oh. Madness? Yes, I will cast this. Go ahead. <laughs> so now they get to dredge Dark Blast if they want to. I'm not sure if it's correct, but I do get to go Cathartic Reunion, discarding Anger. That does give Deathrite Shaman so much stuff to work with, though. Which is a little bit awkward. Yep, Exile Master of Death. Okay. Verdant Catacombs. So, I have a bad land. Let me think about this. Do I have a, a Taiga? I do, in fact, have a Taiga. So, I guess I fetch here to thin my deck a bit. Grabbing Taiga. This Death Watch Shaman is fairly problematic. Badlands gives me access to double black. Actually, I'm going to get Badlands. I have so much fixing here. Let me go red here for Cathartic Reunion. Discarding Anger and... I don't know if I actually need Earthcraft in this position. That was horrendous. Holy cow, that was bad. Go ahead and go Crypt Breaker. My hand's terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so bad. That's unreal. All right, attack for a little bit of damage. Not, not where you want to be. So survival is a bad draw. Like, this is so many lands. How many lands is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's four lands left in my deck. Okay, well, at least that's a good position to be in where I should be drawing all gas. Because now they're kind of committed to Deathrite Shamaning the Anger. And this is what I get for not having removal in my deck. Yep. <laughs> they get to see the bad news. Yep, and they kill Crypt Breaker. They don't exile Anger though, so if I draw Hogak here, they're in trouble. Ooh, Eternal Witness too. They were trying to add Gregor to Gargadon and put Lurith in the main. Ooh, that seems fun. So, uh, what am I doing? Casting Eternal Witness, that's for sure. I feel like it's just gotta be Eternal Witness into Wheel of Fortune. I want the one that draws the most, because basically I just need to draw Hogak this turn. So... One, two, three. Eternal Witness. I only have two mana left because Gilded Goose can't do anything. So I just have to Cathartic Reunion at this point. Okay, I can do that. And I will... I don't think I have any untapped forest, so I guess I just go Taiga. Taiga. Eternal Witness. Getting back. Cathartic Reunion. And we're just digging for Hogak. Ask Cathartic. Discard my two fetches. There's Hogak. Beautiful, beautiful. One, two, three, four, five. And then we tap these two. Then the Hasty Hogak at him. This deck is so sweet. I can double Dark Blast now. Get in there, Hogak, my old friend. Next turn, I can Fiend Artisan sacrifice Hogak to get a creature. <laughs> really, GG's as always. Yeah, those were, those were great games. And like I said, I'm in this great position where if I win, it's great. If I lose, it, then my opponent beat this deck, and that's also great. So <laughs> I'm just having fun regardless. Hogak ends up being just a ridiculous magic card. Uh, see you next round in the finals. Oh, right, we're playing against three fairy man. So this is like the exact kind of thing I was talking about, where Mox Pearl is kind of just worse than... I think I was going to take the... The Jund mana creature. And it, it just like, it's worse than that in almost all the situations I've seen it in this deck because colored mana is what matters, right? Crypt Breaker, Fiend Artisan getting red from Wheel of Fortune would matter. I might still keep this hand because Wheel of Fortune discarding Anger is good. We have Fiend Artisan, but this Marx is not doing that like much more than just a mana creature would. And I think that's true in quite a few situations. Marksmen are good in like the. Uh, I'm gonna play around days actually. So it does help there. 
But I think Marksmen are really good in decks that don't have access to creature mana, which isn't that many. But they are good there. If I hit red, we hit green. Okay. Uh, well, I can play Fiendors and, and Crypt Breaker, actually. But, like, look at this spot, right? Mox Portal isn't adding mana at all. But if I had the Jund creature, I could add red mana off Mox Pearl. So the card's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I would definitely take it highly. But it's not like a windmill slam. You always take this card like some other people think it is. Also, I think I'm playing in Storm. Yeah, we might just die. Forest. Uh, I can sacrifice a creature. What do I find here? Fiend Artisan can kill... One, two, three, four, five. So I can get something that costs four. I can get Vengevine. That does something. I feel like I probably just have to get a Veteran Explorer, like, post-combat. Discard, Anger. I feel like this, I just have to get a Veteran Explorer. I don't know what else I can really do in this spot. A one, yes. And I think I just sacrificed Crypt Breaker. Gilded Goose is also tempting because it adds mana, but... Well... Gilded Goose is also tempting because it adds mana. This is true. The Explorer getting Mountains in particular I think is somewhat useful. Right, I stack Explorer. Wait, is there basic Mountain in the deck? There is not. Okay, Gilded Goose it is. Like a food. I might just die next turn though, we'll see. They did play a Mountain, but they can use that to cast High Tide off Prophetic Prism. Oh. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Fair enough. Yikes. Faithless Looting. All right. Eternal Witness. Give back Gilded Goose. I need that red mana so badly. Play the Goose. Go ahead. <laughs> that was gross. If I had the mana for Fiend Artisan, maybe I would play it. Ooh, Pest Infestation. It doesn't really help me. I think I want to Wheel of Fortune and make them discard the High Tide. Plus give myself more stuff. They memory Lapse that. Sure. We're in trouble. This was just a really awkward start. And my deck doesn't have any discard, right? It's just kind of a straight race, which <laughs> is what I wanted. I love just going off, but not the best in terms of winning against a variety of decks. Which is, again, the thing I mentioned before, where I'm just here to showcase stuff. And I don't know if, like, removal heavy decks showcase the matchup as much as I would like. I can gain three life, but we'll see. I might just get brain freezed. I'll have six. Ooh, high tide frantic search. But yeah, like... In this match, Mox Pearl really didn't do a lot. Because the colorless mana just doesn't matter. Bizarre Baghdad would have been way better. Although, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh man, my hand is terrible. <laughs> There's no way I was winning this game. What is happening here? They cast Wheel of Fortune. They had Miscalc, Is It Charm. So they have quite a bit of removal. They're going to be more of a slow deck. I might be able to deck them by like casting Wheel of Fortune if they draw too much and then fizzle. They snap my Gilded Goose, but Goose is going to have Haste. Past in Flames, I mean, that should be enough to win, but I still want to wait and see a win condition from them. Because I've had decks without Brain Freeze. They snap my other creature. So they definitely have enough Storm to kill me. The question is, do they have a win condition? Ooh, Aetherflux, that'll do it. GG. Yeah, Aetherflux is a good card to know about. They could just cast a bunch of spells and kill me very quickly from this spot. Uh, I feel like... I mean, this could be an Alluren matchup. It's not a good matchup. This is like one of the worst matchups I could run into. I just don't have any hand disruption. Like a single thought, these Cabal Therapy would be great. I just don't have that. Dark Blast seems really bad. Um, Greater Gargadon would actually be awesome if it worked, but there's a bug where... This won't deploy. It's set up for Earthcraft into Crater Hoof, which might just be like my fastest win. I think, um... Actually, Eternal Witness is good against Counter Magic. Their deck does look a little bit disruptive. I'm just gonna bring in Nettle Sentinel. It attacks. <laughs> it's honestly like, it's a 1 mana 2-2 two -two that attacks. Earthcraft, Proving Grounds, Cathartic Reunion. It's so slow. This would be like a turn 3 kill at best, and I would have to hit Something really good. I think I'm going to mulligan. This hand is Cathartic Reunion, but no red mana. Can I do better? I need like... I don't even know what I need. Nader, Wayfinder, Cathartic Reunion, Blazing Root Wall is kind of cool. 
I think I keep this in bottom the Scourge. No red man is kind of rough, but I should be able to hit it off the Wayfinder. We'll see what happens. Need to put, like mill over a Hogak or something. Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to get red man off this. I can't take a whole turn off just to play a tapped land. Okay, there's the red. Did not mill a Hogak. They played Jace, which is very scary. All right, Taiga. Arctic Reunion, discarding Rootwalla, and Tapland. Cast the Rootwalla. There's another Rootwalla that I might just play. Like, just get this really weird beatdown plan going. Ugh. You hate to cast your Rootwallas out, but sometimes you do that and then you hard cast Anger. <laughs> sometimes that's just what your deck does. Drawing Survival here would be pretty good. Elves of Deep Shadow. All right, let's go Bayou, attack with everything. Just get really aggressive with it. Because they have a lot of counter magic, right? So I don't really want to play too much into that. This is six damage. They brainstorm and then they can loot. I think typically you want to loot and then brainstorm because you dig one card deeper. But they might have like Mystical Tutor and I just lose. No, okay, they go to 14. So we're in business if we draw a Survival of the Fittest or something. Because then I can put Anger into my graveyard, and then I can get Hogak, play Hogak. Discard Repeal, interesting. They don't... Discarding Repeal is a huge sign of strength. That's a really good tempo play. I think that tapped is a huge sign of weakness, though. Survival. Gilded Goose. Uh, okay. Um, two, three, four... I can play Anger, but it doesn't even really add to the clock that much. And having it in hand lets Survival or Wheel of Fortune or stuff get a lot better. So I think I just swing out again. These pretty sad beatdowns. Wasteland would be really nice here. I block, we pump. We pump. Hit them for seven. They die next turn. Then I play Gilded Goose into Miscalc. But honestly, them countering this is fine if they're not cycling it to draw a card. Yep, just a weird draw. Yep, exactly as I predicted. So we'll see if they can kill me this turn. This would be a turn 5 kill from them, which is pretty reasonable, especially with a flip to Jace. This deck was just missing like a lightning bolt. Because now they could just go like high tide, do stuff high tide or whatever. Fiery Confluence, my board, hold up. I guess I can't grow my root wall out of it. They could lose if that's their play. If I just draw Survival the Fittest... Actually, I won't have creatures. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, everything dies. They can shrink it. So I can hard cast Anger, which is really sad. This is really sad. Attack them for two. This is just too many lands, I think, for this deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I mean, it's about what you would expect. It's just the wrong half of the deck. And then I'm going to draw Survival of the Fittest this turn and not be able to do anything with it. I don't know, maybe casting Anger there is not even good. But I could top deck Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, gamble. I'm a gambling man. Let's do it. 50-50. <laughs> Alright, what are we getting? That is in fact the question. Vengevine's tempting. Eternal Witness doesn't do a whole lot. I can't cast Hogak. Hmm. Yep, let's just get Vengevine and hope their hand is completely non-functional. So we have a 50-50 for Vengevine to even get into my hand. Nope, never mind. Alright, we're dead. <laughs> it was worth a shot, I think. If I Vengevine, they don't have anything and then I kill them, like that's an avenue to victory. I mean, they're down to four. If they don't kill me this turn, Vengevine could be lethal. I would need Eternal Witness, though. But I think I'm just dead. If they're just main phase frantic searching. Seven mana. Turn about their lands. I mean, this feels like they just have past in flames. Crazy thing is, I think I would have had a shot if my... Well, <laughs> that, that's like saying I would have won the game if I won the game. There's no point in talking about it. Mine's desire for three. I mean, they could... No, they still get to flash it back with Jace, right? There's the reservoir past in flames. GG's. I won't make them play it out. So they showed the win. Uh, yeah. Pretty sweet deck. Unfortunate finals. I just didn't have a, a good matchup for the unfair decks. But this, I mean, that's kind of what this deck is for, right? This deck is here to get under the fair decks because it just completely blanks your opponent's removal for the most part. 
Um, but then I didn't have the disruption that you would expect, like a, a Thought Seize in this deck or a Kitesail Freebooter, I think would have gone a long way. So if you're drafting this deck to win, definitely include something like that. Um, and then obviously like Bizarre of Baghdad, like a couple more discard outlets would have helped a lot. Cathartic Reunion was awesome every time I cast it. Same with Faithless Looting. So more of those things would be great. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon.